Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? Welcome to another edition of Music and Mixing. I am DJ Michael Joseph, and always want to thank John for all his help getting me set up here each week as we do this. Um, if you've never seen the show before, we always take a few minutes at the beginning and let some people come in to chat, do some shout outs, you know, where you're from, that sort of thing. Uh, so if you are in the chat, I'm trying to keep an eye on both chats tonight. So we're broadcasting a couple different places, four different places tonight. And I'm going to try to keep an eye on everything and say hello to everybody. Peter the Hubcap, dude, thank you so much for tuning in to my live stream that just went on a little bit before this. I appreciate you hanging out with me there. Um, uh, hopefully in a couple of months, uh, the, at the expo, we'll be able to see each other again, hang out. Uh, who knows? But I'm still hoping that something good happens, you know, and we, it all gets to happen. So a big shout out to you and everybody else who tuned in to the, to the, the live uh, uh, mix that I did. Trevor, thank you. Big, big shout out to Trevor. Um, like I said, if you want to say where you're from, Peter's from New Jersey. Appreciate everything you do, all the, all the support. Um, I, I have a lot of cool stuff coming up. I'm probably going to be talking about it a little bit later tonight. Um, and some of y'all might be interested in some of it. But right now, we're just kind of waiting for some people to get into the chat. Um, oh, it's DJ Scrapper from the Chill Room. What's going on, dude? Sorry. That's the funny thing about the DJ world is you know people by their by their uh, uh, DJ names more than you know the other half. And that's where I kind of get lost a lot, that uh, a lot of times that, that somebody will be talking, even somebody locally here in the city that will be talking about somebody, and they'll use their actual first name. And I'm like, who are you talking about? And they're like, DJ so-and-so. And I'm like, oh, Sorry, yeah, I just saw him yesterday, sort of thing. So, big shout out, Trevor's from Australia. Um, for those of you who don't know, we do have a chill out thing. It's a room where uh, each and every single night, it started at the beginning of the COVID lockdown, to where everybody can DJs can come and just hang out and talk. It's not a thing about mixing. There's, you know, you can talk about DJing, you can talk about something else, but it's a place where you can just hang out with other people who geek out about the DJ world. And uh, it's just they call it the chill out room because that's all it is. It's people coming into a Zoom room and chilling out. Uh, if somebody in the chat has the link to that, um, because I never remember what it is, I think it's djntv.com forward slash chill is is what you have to do. If that's it, then let me know. Um, uh, let's see who's in here. Joe Bez, thank you. What's going on, Trevor? I uh, said hello to you. Uh, uh, GK the DJ didn't forgot to say hello to you. Everybody else that's tuning in, or like I said, we, if you've never seen the show before, I usually take about the first five minutes, and we kind of kind of go through some stuff here and say hello to people, let them come into the chat, and then we hit the topic. I think tonight's topic is going to be more of a discussion thing than it is me talking. I think it's going to be a back and forth. Sorry, I want to adjust my camera there. Um, I think it's going to be more of a back and forth than a, than a me thing, but because it's a lot of it's going to be ideas that 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 can that, that can work for some people, can't work for others, and different things like that. So I think it's going to be kind of a, an expressive kind of thing like that. Uh, DJ Squeeze, what's going on? Saying hello to everybody. Making sure I'm not missing anybody in any of the chats or on any of the Facebooks. Um, we got quite a few people joined in tonight. I appreciate that. We had a great numbers on last time's show. Uh, if you haven't gone and taken a look at it, it was a really good show. It was about how to become a, a better mix DJ, and I'm going to kind of expand on that tonight because we're talking about how that the DJ world is changing, and tonight we're going to be talking about some ideas and stuff that you can do. Um, again, I'm, I, I focus this show a lot on the mix DJ, but some of it is going to uh, tailor over to other kinds of DJs because we're going to be talking about others. But the whole premise of this is we're going to be trying to figure out how to make you the wo most well-rounded DJ, and that's kind of what we're going to be looking at tonight. So anybody else in the chat want to say hello or is watching on any of the social medias or anything? Because I think, I think we're on four different places tonight. Definitely want to say hello to everybody. Make sure everything's still going through. Is my mic good? Uh, I think it's a good volume. Looks good over here. I do have the deck set up because, I, like I said, I just finished doing uh, a two-hour mix set prior to this. Uh, so if there's any mixing questions you have later on tonight after the topic thing, we can definitely cover those too. So let's see who else is popping in the chat there. Anybody else want to say hi? Otherwise, I'll get started here. For anybody who's watching, I, should, I usually try to stay at the top of the hour. Anybody who's watching this at on demand uh, afterwards, uh, go to about the five-minute point, and that's when we usually start the main part of it. But like I said, uh, it, it should be interesting. I always like to see who, see where everybody's from because we have different people from all over the world. I know tonight we have United States, several different time zones. Um, we have Australia. Um, we get a couple other countries that usually pop into, so definitely... Say a big hello to everybody who's there. Trying to see everything that's going on. I got like 20 different windows open, and that's good because that means 20 different windows are working properly. Cool. All right, so we're about five after the hour, and we're going to hit this. So like I said, if you have questions, kind of hold off. I'm going to hit it in sections, and then we can talk about it in sections, and I'm going to expand a little bit on stuff. But I think, like I said, I think tonight is going to be more of a 
Um, my camera's just way off there. Sorry, it's kind of nitpicky. Um, but I think we're, we're going to be way, way more than just me talking tonight. I think I, I'm hoping that it becomes a back and forth sort of thing over the stuff we're talking about because I think some of you are going to have ideas or already have ideas that can take on the stuff that I'm saying and expand it a lot, lot further. Um, no more shout outs? Cool. All right, so. Tonight's topic is try something new. It's basically how I, I kind of want to name it. And I expanded way beyond that um, because a, as this world changes, as we as DJs change, w you know, what we do is a business. And the business model for pretty much everybody is changing right now. So to continue on as a DJ, you're going to have to change. Um, one of the studies that was done uh, uh, with, uh, I think it was Digital DJ Tips, they asked surveys each year. And one of them, they asked how many DJs make 75 to 100 percent of their income from just DJing and only 10 percent of people out there who call themselves DJs make a 100 percent full-time living at just DJing so that's a really small sort of you know pocket there and everybody else is part-timers so when this changes and the DJ world changes then there's a lot of jobs that are lost and those of us who like me who do it full-time uh, that becomes even more scarce because other people who are part-time are maybe scrambling for this or not. I don't know. But this is kind of a way to kind of help you be a little bit more, um, I don't want to say the word recession-proof, but I think that's the best description. Um, but, you know, as I've always talked about, you have to be prepared because things change. But at this point right now, things have already changed. So it's not like, oh, we got to get ready for change. Change happened. Change hit us in the back of the head uh, several months ago with the 2 by 4 you know, it's like they say, you know, life, life is like uh, walking up to a street, l stopping, looking both directions, and then getting hit from behind. <laughs> That's kind of where we're at right now with this. But um, um, I, I, I saw somebody talk about this in another, another type of article. It had nothing to do with DJing, but I thought it had a lot to do with business and what we're facing right now. And it said, you, you, I'm, I'm changing it over to the DJ world from what it said. It says you have to stop thinking like a DJ right now and start thinking like an entrepreneur because w just DJing isn't going to be enough right now and that's one of the weird things that we're gonna have to change what we do and stop kinda stop thinking in the realm of a DJ like I'm gonna mix I'm gonna do this like I said this show is a lot about the mix DJ so it's a lot about mixing and clubs and different things like that but uh, you have to kinda get out of that and get more into an entrepreneurial way and I'm actually doing some of that now um, that will start the first of next month. I've been working on different things like this, and, and it'll start the first of next month, some of the new things that I'm going to be doing. Um, there are five types of DJs, and see if I can get this to come up, because I'm having trouble getting this to show up later. There we go. There are five types of DJs, okay? And and in the center there, you say superstar DJ, but superstar DJ covers all of them. So there's the club DJ or the bar DJ, depending on how you want to say that. It's the it's the mix DJ. I kind of fit that in there. Someone who is not hired because they have um, lights or anything like that. It's their skills and abilities to mix music is hired. The radio DJ is next to that, and that could be anything from an actual radio station to an internet radio broadcast of some sort where uh, you're kind of hired as a personality more than mixing music or playing music. It's you as the person talking is, is what that is. Uh, next one down below that is mobile DJs, and that includes everything from wedding DJs, parties, corporate, karaoke, trivia, game shows, etc. I put all of you in there. Um, Turntablist is the next one over, and that is more of someone who DJs uh, that is uh, hired because they have extreme DJing skills, scratching and different things like that, to do shows you know, where they would sell tickets and stuff like that. The next drop above that is kind of a new thing to a lot of people who don't see as a DJ, but uh, there's a whole world of people out there who make songs that are music producers that then learn to DJ to go out on tour and make more money. So you can be a music producer in the DJ world. And like I said, then when you look at the center, it says stu superstar DJ. It fits all of them into that. And that's what we're going to try to talk about tonight is that we're going to try to get you into as many of those categories as we can to help you have a very rounded business and a business with a lot of income that maybe wasn't there before. So like I said, I'm going to try to pop over to the chat to see if you have anything as we go along there. Um, if not, like I said, I'm going to come back in after we're done. There's not a lot to this tonight. Um, so we can bring the questions up or whatever here in a bit. Now, the first thing I want to do is reiterate what I did on the last show two weeks ago is about learn to mix. Because learning any new skill, no matter whether you're a carpenter, plumber, painter, 
a, a, a computer programmer, teacher, uh, a healthcare worker, whatever, a new skill makes you more valuable. Whatever it is, doesn't matter what you do. So if you don't know how to mix, learn to mix because that is a skill then that you can take to get jobs that you didn't have before to be creative in this new world and, and market yourself, you, not just your business, but you as the product. So if you did not see my show two weeks ago about how, how to become more of a, a better mix DJ, go look at that. There was a lot of people who viewed that, and I want to thank you all for checking that out, the comments, everything. I appreciate everybody for being a part of that. But go look at that. Learn to mix. Now, the next thing is kind of in with that, but it's a little bit different, and there's a lot of categories within the next one that I'm going to hit that I think uh, I'm seeing people take advantage of in all the ways that I'm about to talk about. Um, it's online DJing. Now, for those of you tuned into my show prior to it, I DJ kind of like I do at a club, being jumping around silly, but I'm also talking on the mic a lot more here than I do at the club because I don't talk on the mic at all at the club. Uh, the places I DJ at, they don't, just don't want you to be on the mic other than a couple times a night, maybe at most. Um, but online DJing can be anything from mixing, and you can make money at that if you're good and have a following that people tip you, and you can make money every single week by putting on multiple shows and getting stuff like that. Um, you can monetize your live show that you do into some sort of blog that to where you explain what you do and different things like that. That can be monetized. Uh, a live show that's beyond just mixing, but talking about mixing, kind of like what this is. Um, you can do fundraisers, which I got to do one this year uh, during, the, during the beginning of the COVID for the food bank of the county that I were, the town where I grew up at. Um, so you can use your online skills to uh, raise money for places and things. It doesn't just have to be for yourself. You can join in with any one, uh, you know, any number of, of good causes that you, you, you want to support and DJ for them, take donations, and there you go. It's not costing you a thing. You're giving a little bit of time. You're not leaving your house. You don't have to set up a lot of equipment like you would at an average, you know, like if it was a fundraiser at a, at a hall or something like that. Um, Think about things like that because those things expand your brand. Like I said, all these different things I'm going to be talking about expand your brand and get you out there to different people. Um, I like to talk about each one of these things as a billboard. So if I drive down a street and I have a billboard here and, you know, about mixing, and then I drive down another street and I have a billboard about uh, my ability to talk on the mic, and then I drive down a street a little bit further and I have ability about me streaming online, these are billboards everywhere, and everybody's going to see them. And the more billboards I can put up, the more I'm known, just like any other business, whether it's a car business or re uh, you know, a realtor or anything else. Get your billboards up as many as you can. One of the things about the online mixing that I think is incredible is that it connects you with a whole new audience that you would not have connected with before. Um, in tonight's mix, I have a boatload, and I mean a boatload, of people out there who support me and tune in each time I do a mix. And these are not people who live anywhere close to me that could come out on any one of the nights that I would be DJing live here in the city. And I'm making a connection with people both people who enjoy the mixing and people who I'm just friends with where we kind of support each other. And that's a very special thing that would that I'm telling you 20 years ago wasn't possible. Uh, and that, that's in my lifetime, you DJ to the people that you could drive to. And that was it. So now we're getting to be able to DJ from all over the world, all different time zones. There's people all from all over the world and time zones tuned into the show right here. So use that to, to, to build an audience of people who like what you do because you could do something that's 10 times different than what mine is and you could have a whole following over there that would not even like me. So don't think about it just being, I'm just a mixed DJ. The only mixed DJs do shows. I'm not a mixed DJ. Be creative. Try to do something. Maybe just do a show where you're sharing music that people can play in the background and you talk every little bit, you know, kind of like a radio station, which I'm going to hit on that here in a minute. Um, also, the other part of the connection with this, which I absolutely love, is to connect with other DJs, and which that's one of the things that I've gotten to do over this is through the mixing, getting to, to, to connect to other DJs. I had two that tuned into my show tonight that I kind of geeked out, and I even goofed up the mix when the one of them came in. Uh, one's uh, a guy, many of you know him, is DJ Larry D. He's been around for a while, great video DJ. Um, and he popped in tonight, and I and it kind of kind of geeked out about that, you know. And the other one is uh, uh, Wiz Khalifa's DJ, uh, DJ Bonix, who actually lives here in the city, and he he popped in, incredibly talented DJ, and and you make a connection with people like that. That because of you know Larry living in a total different place and Bonix, you know being a really really big name DJ, it's tough for someone like me to cross paths with them. And with this, I get to cross paths and you know support them. They support me. We go in and watch and get to share. So it's a great way to connect with other people who do what you do, not just people who enjoy what you do, but people who do what you do. Um, 
it, mixing online can help you show your skills and someone go wow they're a really good dj or they're they great they they're great at picking songs i like their song choices and that could be a reason why someone wants to hire you so it's just kind of an easy way to showcase what you do um one of the things that also lets you connect with, and I thought this is one of the coolest things happened a couple weeks ago, is you get to connect with music lovers. Because about a month ago, I was DJing online, and these guys who were watching the show kept throwing out songs. And I'm like, yeah, grab that, and I'll play that, grab it, play it. And what they were doing, they told me afterwards, is they were actually looking through their literal record collection, like literal vinyl records, and saying, oh, I love this song back in the day, and asked me, and I had the song, and I would play it. So it made a connection with other people who just loved what I was doing, the music. We both loved the mu the same music. It wasn't the fact of how I was DJing it or anything like that. It was it was like, oh, I love this song back in the day. Play this song, and I'm like, oh, absolutely, I love that song back in the day. So it makes a connection over just music. Um, I talked before about doing like a, a different audience with the radio show. Um, you could create, and I know guys who do this all the time. There's even famous DJs out there who fit in that superstar DJ that do radio shows each week where they're playing music, and then every couple of songs they stop and talk about the songs to, like a radio DJ would do. And you could create your own little niche that if you have a certain style of music that you like or something you want to get into, you could do a whole show about just that. There's one uh, guy, um, I always forget his first name. I cannot, I always forget his first name. Every year I see him at the DJ Expo. He's an awesome guy, but he does Soulful House, Soulful House Nation. And it's Soulful House music and he does this entire radio show uh dan is his name i can't remember his last name sorry but uh he does these great shows uh, all about house music and it's not like him i mean he can mix but the show is not about the mixing skills it's about the music and he talks and just becomes the radio personality and he does this online with people and it and it's just like being a radio dj um you can also take those things and kind of monetize them uh like i said you can do uh, um Stuff like having your own Patreon or tips, which I do on the other one there. Uh, and you can get people to support you that way. And you can be doing something you love. And like I said, it all adds up. So if you have 100 listeners that give you $1, uh, you have $100. And that's for some people, that's a small gig or half a gig or something like that. But it's something that you need to look at with just the online stuff. Um, we're going to go a little bit past online. Like I said, I'm almost done. We'll hit some. I'm seeing some stuff jump up there in the... Um, chat so we get some good stuff coming in the chat i'm watching that but uh one of the things i'm going to come back to doing is selling merchandise or as i like is, is it's known in the business as merch i had a friend of mine's mom who hated the fact that i called it merch as opposed to merchandise in the business called merch uh selling things like i'm going to be bringing back at the first of the month the mj shirts because i haven't sold them for a while i used to just give them away as part of a promotional thing and they're just my logo and, and website and stuff and i think i'm going to probably start selling them see if anybody wants those that sort of thing it's maybe some other merchandise stuff like that to make some money. Like I said, you make $10 here off of this thing, $10 off of this thing, and it all adds up. But like I said, you're looking at it as an entrepreneur. If an entrepreneur, like I said, you look at a, a rap artist or a singer, a lot of times they'll come out with their own colognes or their own clothing line. And that's why you have to kind of think about your business too, is you have to think of it like an entrepreneur and stuff like that. So when it comes to the merchandise, like I said, that's what I'm trying to bring out soon. Uh, after the first of the month, the MJ shirts will be coming out and different things like that. So if you're interested, uh, they're going to be white and black. The only two, that's, that's kind of what I run, a white one with black logo and a black one with a white logo. Or I will do... Every once in a while, somebody will ask me to do a black shirt with the black logo. It becomes like this off-color thing, and it's really neat if those can be ordered too. So, like I said, merch stuff, different things like that. Um, this is one that – this is different. I see guys doing this, and I see guys making a lot of money off of this, and this is very different. Um, but a lot of guys live and die by crates. Now, you know me with virtual. I do you know tag songs, and we can do that string search with virtual. We don't have to worry about crates. But there are guys out there that are very good at putting together crates for different events. And they have been selling their crates lately. Now, I'm not talking they're giving away the actual songs, but what they're doing is they're selling the list that they have. So maybe they have an 80s list or a wedding uh, uh, dinner music list. And all they're doing is they're selling their crate lists. So it's songs. So someone else could go, oh, that's what so-and-so plays during this time of night. Or that's what so-and-so plays during the wedding. Or that's what so-and-so plays during the kids' event or whatever. And a lot of guys are selling crates. So there's another way to take uh, the... the stuff that you have your skills and abilities and sell them um in the music world also like the one i'm there was a music producer start making music or take music that you've made before and re-release it which that's what i'm doing i've I, I, a lot of people don't know but i put out 12 albums in my lifetime uh, a lot of them were, were vocal al albums where i actually sang and stuff some were dj albums mix albums studio albums all these different things i've always created a lot and i mean a lot of original music and i'm now going to start 
again, after the first of the month, start putting some of those out uh, and put them onto Spotify, different places like that, so that they can be streamed and different things like that. So I'm going back into what I did in the 90s as a vocal artist, selling my merchandise, selling my things, but as the DJ now trying to, to make a little bit here. Like I said, it adds up. Besides the little dollars it adds up here and there, it becomes another billboard. So if I have a song on Spotify that I can share and someone clicks it and plays it, I'm not going to make very much money off it. Like, minuscule pennies per the hundreds of plays. It's You don't make anything at all from the Spotify stuff. But it's the fact that that will be another billboard out there for me. Um, and also, you can do this... Without maybe making original music, you can do it through making mixes and putting them on like Mixcloud and SoundCloud and get followers that way. So you put your mixes, whether it be a live recorded mix, uh, a studio recording, a, a an entire mix that you put together on maybe Ableton or something like that, or an actual mixtape to where you're putting in sections and, and building it like an actual album. Um, put those out there, and that is a way to to generate something. Like I said, think of it as an entrepreneur, and it's a way to generate people that, you know, whether you get them to go to your website via the, the mixes on the mix cloud or different things like that. Um, this is a good example that I always tell. This was a long time ago this happened, and it was about the time that we were switching off of CDs and going to digital. And I remember being down in uh, Nashville for a show, they, were, they have a showcase week down there, so where it's nothing but showcases. So you're performing here, performing there, performing there in front of different people. So you go and perform in front of this record label, and perform in front of this record label, and this producer, and this tour. So that they pick you if they want to pick you for tours or anything like that. And uh, it was about that time that they were switching from handing someone a physical CD to a mix being put online. And I remember putting some stuff online before I went down there, and it got a thousand listens. Now, I, prior to that, I couldn't imagine handing out a thousand CDs, let alone a thousand people actually listening to that CD that I handed them. Most of them probably would throw it in the back seat of their car, and that was it. But the digital age lets us reach a lot of people, and it's even grown more since way back then. So think about that, just putting your stuff out there. Um, even if somebody else doesn't like it, who cares? Because if you find your if, if people think you sound stupid and you find your audience and your audience brings you an income and brings you support, you win, they lose. So, you know, so do your thing your way. Um, this is probably one of the toughest ones that I want, I want to bring out, uh, but a lot of people can pull it off, is get a sponsor. And that sponsor could be something simple as um, they'll give you clothing to wear during a gig it, or a broadcast or whatever. Um, that may not be a lot, but it's a free shirt. Um, there's a, a guy I follow online, and he put out this shirt during the 4th of July, and he's charging $32 for that T-shirt. I really want that shirt, but I don't want to pay $32. But if I had a spot company that sponsored me and gave me a shirt, uh, well, I didn't even think about this. Tonight I have the Denon shirt on. They're one of the ones that gave me this shirt. I, uh, no one, I don't think anybody but a Denon DJ can own this particular one. There are certain ones that they give out, certain ones they sell. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But... A free T-shirt's a free T-shirt, so think about being sponsored that way. Um, by wearing clothing or using a specific gear, if a company sends you headphones, use the headphones, and, and then, hey, you got a free set of headphones. Or or uh, I've paired up with different music uh, companies before that do you know your, your music pools. So there are things like that that you can do. And the very last one, um, and this one goes a lot of different directions, and I've, I've made it last because I want to talk about it for me, is uh, DJ Education. Um, it's something that I do. It's kind of what this show is partially about, but I also teach DJ classes. I had a student last week that I that came and took a class, and uh, he, he said he really, le like, there was one thing that happened. Like, he learned a lot, but there was one thing that came in there, and he goes, the, he goes, the whole price was worth me learning this one thing. You know, it was worth the, t the price to get in, and uh, there's little things like that. So if you do want to take DJ classes or you feel you can teach them, do them. I have them in a couple different manners to where you can have it one-on-one, -on -one and it can be taught about mixing. It can be taught about helping you with software because I've had somebody, hire, several people hire me to help them understand virtual DJ and how to make it run the way they want it to because virtual is so, uh, uh, you can make it do anything you want it to. Uh, customization, and that can be done with software, hardware, MIDI mapping, anything like that. You can both teach it or take it. And like I said, that's why I teach some of the classes that you can take DJing class, you can take software classes, you can, I can help you with your hardware anything like that and they can be done as individual classes or group classes and that's one of the things that I'm going to be starting like I said first of August all, all these different things are going on is that I'm going to push more about the individual DJ classes if you're interested contact me but I'm also going to do group ones that to where instead of paying a full price like he did you could join in with four or five other people at a reduced price still get the same lesson 
but have a chance to talk back and forth directly like the one-on-one, -on -one, like it would be a student in a classroom. So these are things that if you feel you have something to teach, like I said, I have a friend of mine who's incredible when it comes to uh, DMXing stuff, which I am clueless about, uh, and he could do, he could be sitting there teaching you one-on-one -on -one about DMXing and could be helping. And if you have those kind of skills and knowledge, don't take them for granted. If you have the ability to repair uh, lights or something, maybe that's something you can talk about. Um, Different things like that are all things that are marketable and how you should be looking at yourself nowadays. Like I said, it's more than just being a DJ. It's being an entrepreneur. And like I said, as, as I've been working over this past couple of months, I, I'm getting back to what I was doing in the 90s as a vocal artist, looking at myself more, more and more of a brand. And like I said, after the first of the month, some of these things are going to be kicking into gear, plus a few other things that I haven't told anybody about that are even bigger that are probably, probably going to take me to the end of the year to finish because... There's, there's some big projects. I've talked to a few people about them. Um, I may even get back into making some new music, too. I don't know, because everybody's making it, and it only takes one song to be a hit and be out there. Because, like I said, there's a lot of big-name DJs that you know of that weren't did, did not know how to DJ until they had a hit song, and then they went to someone and said, Hey, I got this hit song. They want me to go out on tour. Can you teach me how to DJ? And that's when they learn to DJ after they've made a hit song. So that's a way to think about doing this. But... Um, I'll take some questions now, but uh, exactly what I'm saying there is that don't think like a DJ. Think like an entrepreneur about everything. So we're going to see what kind of questions we have here. Um, we got a, lots of people chatting tonight. Freaking awesome. I love all you guys for tuning in. i um, trying to see here. Uh, someone's talking about DJ instructor. Yeah, that Peter. Yep, there you go. Thank you. Um, connecting with other DJs. You have no idea. Like I, like I talked about in my show last week. Uh, being a mixed DJ, that's where m you're going to get most of your jobs as other DJs because most of the places, the clubs and bars that I work at, it is not the manager, it's not the owner that hires the DJ. There's one particular DJ that the manor, manor, manager or owner trusts that hires all the other DJs, So if I, which I do for a couple places I DJ at. So if they say, hey, we, need it, we want to start putting DJs on Wednesday night, they'll come to me and go, get us a DJ for Wednesday night, and then it's my job to put a DJ there. So if you're my friend and hang out or if I know that you're a good DJ and you're open, you're going to be someone I call. But if you're not on my radar, I can't call you. So that's the thing that connecting is super, super important with other DJs. Um, let me see some here. Somebody's talking about co uh, 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 cozy drink cozies with their with their logo on it. I never had those. I, I still somewhere have dog tags because back in the '90s, dog tags were kind of a thing. So I had MJ dog tags. I think I had a bookmark at one point. I had s boatloads of stickers. I had temporary tattoos, headbands, wristbands, hats, shirts. Obviously, bunches of albums. Stuff like that. And they were all stuff that, you know, you can go in a place. And, and that's where I made most of my money when I used to travel was at the merch table. So I'd go and perform for 30 minutes on stage or whatever whatever my set was and then sit down at the merch table and people come buy an album, buy a T-shirt, buy a whatever. You get to ch chat with people, talk with them, and that's where you make your money at. Um, see here. Somebody was talking about, uh, talking about reaching out to me about virtual DJ. Yeah, definitely, Amber. Like I said, anybody, it's really easy because I don't have a social life or a day job, so I can fit pretty much anyone in unless you want a, a, a class before noon on Eastern time. It's not going to happen because I, I live the DJ life, so I'm up at the crack of noon every day. Um, but I can fit you in the middle of the afternoon, evening, late at night. The only the only time I don't is, like I said, early in mornings or Sundays. I won't do lessons on Sundays. Um, that's the day I try to take off and not work and try to relax if I can mentally. Um, doesn't always happen, but I try really hard to do that. But uh, if you're interested in that, contact me directly or hit me up on social media. And like I said, it, c it can be anything. It doesn't have to be a how to DJ. It can be, like I said, I had a guy that wanted me to help him better MIDI map some of the buttons so that he wanted to trigger certain things to happen with buttons. And I helped him MIDI map them. So one of them was that he wanted to be able to put a playlist in and be able to talk on the mic and introduce the next group up. So all he had to do would be to press a button, and it would automatically start the next song with a fade in as he talked about them. And then when he pressed the button again, he wanted it so that 
he didn't have to do volumes or anything, so that it faded the song out and faded the next one in as he's introducing the next couple. And that was something that he wanted programming, and that's something that can be done as far, you know, like it doesn't have to be a DJing class. It can be a program. It can be an understanding. I had another friend that uh, had me come and help with the minute settings within virtual because he wanted the platters and stuff to be a little bit tighter and, and more responsive. And we played with all kinds of little uh, uh, latencies and, and all kinds of stuff like that, touch sensitivities and sound sensitivities and scratch quality versus all these other things. And we played around, and even helping him, I, I tweaked some of mine to where um, – the number of one of them was like eight is the stock number. And I went in and dropped it up to like 50 or whatever it was. And I was like, yeah, I like this a lot better. Uh, by helping him, I learned out too. So definitely if you have any of those. Um, uh, yeah, Peter, that's a great thing, which I've actually gotten to do that too. Peter talked about if you have a good voice, uh, you can get uh, radio commercials or different things like that. Um, I, I got to do one last year through John. Some of them are a lot of work. Some of them aren't any, they're kind of easy, but some of them take a lot of work. Um, but you can do voiceovers if you're good at reading, and it doesn't have to be that deep radio voice. It can be just a normal voice, a voice people can relate with. Uh, if you can speak clearly, that's one of the biggest things. Um, but you can get jobs just reading commercials. I have a friend of mine who is an incredible musician. He used to have a band that, op that toured and opened for uh, Wild Cherry back in the day. And he's older now. He's older than me. And he built a studio in his basement. And he makes a lot of money right now by people coming in and r doing audio books in his studio. So where he'll set someone there in a chair, and they'll go through the thing, and he'll stop and start the recordings and all that stuff. And that's all he does is do audio. I mean, he does a lot more than audio books. He does band recordings too. But he has a lot of stuff that he makes just someone reading books. So whether you have the ability to record someone doing audio books or you think you have the voice to do audio books, if you're a really good reader to where when you're reading it sounds like you're talking – those are there's are ways to make money too. They a lot there are so many things out there that you can do, but you, like I said, you can't think like a DJ. You have to think like an entrepreneur. You have to think that you're the brand and how many places can I stick my brand? Think about all the things over the world, artists that we've seen that have that have hucked themselves on 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 T shirts and mugs and and, and 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 you know, Chia pets and, and all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, maybe I'll do an MJ Chia pet or something. Who knows? Um but there's lots of stuff you can do out there. It, but it takes a little work, a little bit of effort, and you got to hustle. Um, like I said, think like an entrepreneur. Um, any other questions? Like I said, it doesn't even have to be about tonight's topic. We can talk about mixing, like I said, because I have the decks opened up and all kinds of stuff like that. I'm trying to see who else is in chats. I'm trying to keep an eye on both chats because, like I said, we're on four different places here. Um, uh, oh, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate that. Uh, Dave came in the chat there. He took my class one at a time. Um, uh, he wanted to learn a little about, about mixing, and my mixing technique that I teach in class is a little different than most people. Uh, what I try to do is I kind of try to make it to where most people think, they'll ask me questions like, how do you mix this song with this song? And that's not how I think as a DJ. I think that every song is modular, and I piece them together. So I teach people to think about songs in pieces, and, and a lot of people will go into that going, but no, 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 I want, I want to start from the beginning of the song. And, and, and to my mind, uh, the beginning of the song isn't the important part. You know, this part is the p most important part, so you need to work backwards from this part and stuff like that. But I do appreciate you giving me a thumbs up there. There's there's a, uh, uh, what do you call that? Um, uh, uh, I don't even know what that's called. You know, someone someone's you know, uh, giving me a good review. Thank you. So I appreciate that. Um, and, uh, and also beyond the classes that you, you pay for, I'm able to answer questions. What I don't like is when someone comes and asks me a question and they know it's going to be a long question that's going to be lots of, back and forth and, and they're getting uh, uh, several hours of my life for free um I, I i don't a lot of times i'll just people who i know who who i've said you know hey i can help you with that but we're gonna turn it into a uh a, you know a, a tech fee of some sort and they'll go okay how much is the tech fee and i'll tell them and they'll be like uh i'll get back to you and then later on they'll go hey i figured it out i found a video online so i have no problem with someone finding a video online to do that um but you you can you you can do it either way. It's up to you. A lot of people, like I said, I want to start looking at my stuff not as a giving away free, but to charge something because, like I said, what I do, uh, I believe that it is, it is a unique way of doing things that can help you make more money. Again, like the stuff that I do with this Jockey News, this is all part of the stuff I do to try to do do stuff like that. So thank you, Dave. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, <laughs> John talks about OBS and Restream. Um, OBS was a challenge. I've actually been using OBS for five or six years at least. 
Um, I, for those of you who don't know, I, I, one of the other shows that I talked about online streaming, I've actually been doing online DJing since 2004. At least that's the earliest that I could find, and I had pictures and everything out there that I found of, of me doing an online show with horrible camera quality. I think it was like 480 or something was the camera quality back then. Um, and, and there's just, there's, there's, it, it, we've grown a long way to be able to do multi cameras, multi views, multi things like that. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that I can, you know, help with OBS and restream and different things like that, that, that become, you know, you know, more than that, like I said, because the, 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 the live, shows that I do, the live mixing is multi-camera and all these different things going on, and it has gotten me attention other places. Um, I am doing an educational thing next Wednesday, 2 p.m. for uh, DJology, uh, DJ-ology, if you want to look it up. I'll, I'll be posting, I've already posted some stuff on my social media, I'll be posting more. Uh, they wanted a little special thing on Virtual DJ, and I'm going to go there and cover my five uh, favorite things about Virtual DJ, you know, quick tips or whatever you want to call it. And I'm also going to be doing a mix sometime for them, too, on their channel, the DJology channel. And they have a lot of incredible DJs over there. So I took it as, as a big tip of the cap for them to invite me to come over. So big thanks to John and all those guys for uh, letting me come over there. So who else has got questions in the chat? It can be about anything. You can even ask me how my weekend was. Um, we have a lot of people watching tonight. We've had a lot of people tune in all, all over the night. Um, most of the people, like I said, uh, come in here and kind of hang out um, and kind of get the information. It is a long show. It's an, usually an hour long. You don't have to tune in for the whole thing. You can zip through things. But I try to make the first half so that it's a short show of information that you can skip. Or, or then if you're live, watching it live, you can ask the questions afterwards. So if you have any more questions in the chat, feel free to holler out. Like I said, it can be about anything, mixing, whatever you want, whatever. We can talk. We can talk for a while here if you want. But definitely thank everybody for tuning in tonight, wherever you're from. Um, we really do have a great audience that tunes into all the disc jockey news stuff. Um, it's it's a blessing to get to be a part of things with some of these people. And, and the world that John Young has opened up to me and getting t to do is incredible. Um, I, I did videos before I came to disc jockey news that, that would get like six views. And now I think I looked the other day at one of them I did recently that had like 40,000 views. So it's like, what? So... Definitely a big thanks to John and all that. Um, uh, Peter said Sundays are for riding. N not not mostly, because those of you know, I ride motorcycles. I was just up in the mountains riding past weekend. Um, after tonight, I will be posting one of my Wheelie Wednesday pictures, so you'll get to see that from last weekend. But I'm also leaving tomorrow morning to go back up to ride some more, because, like I said, I'm trying to, to get some of this in while I can, uh, because once if we get back to normal, we start getting back to work, I won't have opportunities like this. Um, so, like I said, after the first of the month, things are going to probably change a little bit, more focused on that. So I'm going to try to have some more friends that, like I said, that have uh, places where we can go ride cabins we stay at. It's not like an expense or anything. I'm not you know, renting anything. It's stuff that they own and just invite me to come up and and stuff like that. So I'm going to be coming up in, in, uh, next weekend, too, and hanging out a little bit, riding riding the bikes and what's not. But I try to get away because you have, you have to find some leisure time in your life. You can't, you know, I know people that live and breathe DJing and live and breathe their life online and I'm telling you that will burn you out so freaking fast you don't even know uh, people are like oh no I'm fine I love being online I'm on video every day I'm on this and that give that about five five to seven years and you're going to be hating people completely um, so <laughs> like I said pace yourself um, uh, Randy says have you been able to utilize the Facebook stream add-on in virtual DJ I skipped that I have tried it there's nothing wrong with it, but I prefer to go through OBS because OBS lets me do a lot more configuring. Like, I can't even begin to tell you what I can configure. Um, I can add on, like, right here. I don't even know if I can fit. The, I don't, I'm don't. i so afraid it's going to bump, bump and, and, and come off. But I have um, an old phone. I try to bring it up into camera here. That is now my scene switcher. So there you can kind of see it a little bit there. And so when I need to s switch scenes in the live stream, I can just press buttons on there and it's cutting to different scenes with different cameras and different all kinds of stuff where with doing with virtual DJ, I can't do the switching and stuff like that. And that's kind of like I said, why I like using the OBS, because it lets me just be 100 percent open with what I want to do and, and make things happen the way I want them to happen. But there's nothing wrong with the, w the way vir virtual has their streaming stuff it's it's brilliant the fact that they can do all of that on one platform that's why people try to argue with me about virtual this virtual that i'm like you don't even know what all it can do i i, I still say they need to change the name from virtual to versatile dj because no matter what kind of djing you do it can help you and in, 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 
expand upon that long before, long further than you can ever imagine. When I start talking to people about what it can do, that blows their mind. Like I had no idea. I mean, I've had people that argue with me that virtual DJ sucks, and then I talk to them for like two minutes, and then I go, "Man, I didn't even know." I'm like, "I know you didn't know," <laughs> but it's cool. We we share, we learn, we grow, and that's what you know. A lot of this is about. Um. See here, Trevor. I've done a handful of live streams and it helps me to be better DJ uh, as my DJ friends in the chill room have advice. Yeah, DJ chill room's got good. Um, it, I'm pretty sure that's djntv.com forward slash chill is how you get to the chill room. It's every single night starting at about 9 p.m. It's just a hangout room. Like I said, it's not people DJing. It's not crazy loud. It's just people who are DJs that can go and talk about DJ stuff or other stuff, talking about food or talking about whatever. Um, it's good. But yeah, DJing, it's one of the things you have to understand that there, you can sit in a room and DJ by yourself all you want, but there is nothing like DJing in front of a crowd. And that's the same. it's not quite as much as a live stream. You don't get quite that sharp edge of what you need to be perfect. But it, doing a live stream helps you, and it, it makes you push yourself to where if you were just DJing by yourself, you would make goof-ups and you wouldn't care. I mean, I make goof-ups all the time, and I'll point them out to people, and people are like, wait, I didn't even know you made a mistake. I'm like, yeah, I totally screwed that up. Um, but doing it live makes you push yourself to be better at these things. Um, so practice, record yourself. Like I said, I download all of mine afterwards because, um, I do a lot of my stuff over on, um, Twitch and Twitch will, will block after a while once they start scanning for copyright stuff. So like as soon as my show's over, I download the show. So I have it in full video and everything to check out later, post some pictures. Like last week, if you go to my Facebook page or any of the other ones, I posted a little scratch section I did from last Wednesday or two Wednesdays ago, whatever it was. Um, I, I, that was not a planned thing. So though, if you've watched the scratch video that's there, it's also on my YouTube page. It was not a planned thing. It was just as the mix was going on, I'm like, oh, this sounds pretty good. And I started scratching. I'm like, oh, this actually sounds good because there's multiple tones to this scratch. So I'm like live figuring out what I'm going to do. So that recording was just an absolute off the cuff live figuring out what I'm going to do with that mix. And that's where that scratch came from. But doing things like that help you. So now I have that repertoire that if I want to drop to that song, I know that beginning part has a nice scratchable part that is really really moldable it's not stuck to one thing i can really mold with that so who else in the chat got some questions like i said um we don't have to go the full hour tonight if you don't want if you have questions like i said it can be about mixing if you want anything shown here virtual whatever or if you just want me to shut up that's cool too um <laughs> um uh amber says uh you make me smile pointing out your boo-boo mixes <laughs> Um, you can you can tell if you want to Amber if you want to say they're noticeable or not noticeable I don't care because to me they are when I make them they're big and and horrendous um, and I, I make a lot of them and the toughest thing with doing a live thing here like this is that I'm pressing buttons on on my mixer here I'm watching the chat on this computer I'm picking songs I'm switching videos and it becomes difficult and I miss things a lot of times to where I, I plan it to hit at a certain point and I totally miss it or hit the wrong effect I did that earlier tonight on one thing I, I meant to do a backspin and it ended up hitting a, a, an echo out button before I gr before I grab the backspin and I'm like I did not want an echo backspin I did not want that um, but it takes hustle you know like I said it's practice but it will make you better trust me um, even if you do it to record it and, and play for someone in your house or something like that um, there's a lot you can do with DJing and be creative and like I said uh, I don't know if you remember and I always forget his name Carl and I can never remember his last name he used to be the guy he was kind of the guy that designed a lot of the stuff with Pioneer and then he went over to In Music and did a lot of work with Denon. And then he went on to another thing after that. But he actually, when he was younger, was actually a uh, winner on the old show Star Search. So when he got through all the DJ business stuff, he wanted to go back to performing. And he has created an entire business where he travels around the country performing at retirement homes with big crowds, incredibly fun shows, costumes, the whole nine yards. And he has made a living doing something he loves by by creating a brand of him that he can go out and make money for his family and, and be in control of that and have fun and if you can do that in the DJ world too that is you know that's an incredible powerful thing and like I said now's the time to take advantage of it because where else in, in life have you ever heard of someone getting a pause in life to try try something new like this our pause may be over soon it may be going longer we don't know no one knows but today's all you got, so you got to take today and try to make something of it if you can. Um, 
He ever said sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. Um, yeah, like I said, there's so much that I'm watching here that it's, it's funny when I make them because it's like I'm trying to. Th- I think through my mixes like I like I'm talking through them. So if I can't talk through the mix in my mind, I'm gonna screw it up because. I'm working through when this comes in, where can I blend this? But some of the time it's also listening because I, with the new stems with virtual, I'm doing a lot of blend outs with using stems and I'm doing longer mixes and loops and different things to where I need to listen intently to the different things that I'm bringing in out as I'm blending these. But if I'm looking at the chat or answering someone or talking on the mic, which like I said, as I'm DJing, I don't normally do, um, those things get lost and, and sometimes transitions get crappy. Um, like I said, you may never notice them unless I point them out. Some of them might be might be as simple as I didn't make the echo as long as I wanted to make the echo. The echo was too short. Um, or somebody else was like, you've got to be kidding. And, or to me, if I wanted it to echo eight counts and it only echoed four, I screwed it up. So, Which I did that tonight. Like I said, that one DJ that was watching that I'm a big fan of, um, I did a way too short echo on a song, and it cut out, and it sounded terrible. So stuff like that. Any other questions, people in the chat? Like I said, it's about a quarter till. We went 45 minutes. Normally we go an hour. We can cut it short tonight. It's no big deal. Um, but if you have questions, go ahead and shout out. I'm going to let you guys shout them out there. Um, definitely want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, appreciate both this and the mix show. Like I said, I got another one coming up next week. Uh, uh, both my DJing and DJing for DJology and more stuff for Disc Jockey News. And if any company ever releases another product, we'll do vi- product videos. But <laughs> I don't know when we're ever going to. I'm hoping we see stuff as they move the DJ Expo until uh, November, which that's going to pull away from a lot of people. Um, like one of them, uh, like I said, I always end up going to uh, the DJ Expo with Dan Carpenter from our Disc Jockey News uh, crew who does the Monday night show. But because he is a school teacher, he's unable to go because in November he's going to be thick in the middle of the school year, whether it be live, virtual, or whatever. Um, so there are people like that that aren't going to be able to go. So I'm kind of interested in seeing what the Expo will be this year and what products they will bring out because everything's kind of been on hold, because I guarantee there's companies that have stuff that wanted to release them already, but they're kind of on hold because a lot of DJs aren't making money, so they're not going to put out a product that they're not going to be able to sell, or maybe their own factory can't even do work on it, or their place that ships it can't have the employees there only a certain amount of times. So there's a lot right now. So, yeah, thank you, Dave, for, uh, for clicking. Don't forget, you know, share the this video, like it, comment it. Um, if I make comments back, please don't think that I'm sounding like I'm yelling at you because I made a comment back to someone on one of them and I'm thinking I hope he didn't think I was like yelling I was just explaining further because that's what I do so no more questions then last chance going once you can ask me anything like I said don't forget I have the DJ classes that you can join as an individual or after the first of the month I'm going to be doing group classes and I'll be talking about that and what it costs to be a part of that Um, you can't support what I do through any of the the different things uh, uh, PayPal um, cash app or Venmo if you want to do that. I do have a, um, a um, what's the other one? I can't even think what the other one is. Um, uh, Patreon. Thank you. Yeah, I have a Patreon that I have not done much with. That also starts at the beginning of the month, like I said, when things kind of get back into a swing. Um, I'm going to be, again, looking at the looking at the entrepreneurial side of my business and kind of taking it further that way. And like I said, I have some other things in the work that are a complete left turn away from the DJ world that I'm hoping that it takes off too. So like I said, you've really got to, you, you really got to, to, to give yourself credit for what you can do and don't look at what you can't do. If you have a skill or ability that someone else doesn't, my friend Todd has always said, all you need to know to be a teacher is more than your student. So all of us have something we can teach and all of us have something we can learn. And it's just matching the right people. And with the Internet today and us being able to connect all over the world, it's just about putting the right people together to, to work together and be stronger. So, again, thank you, guys. I think we're going to call it here at about a quarter till or ten till now. Uh, uh, thank everybody for tuning in, both to the live show and this one. Again, if you have any questions about the DJ Mix, if you have any questions about Disc Jockey News stuff, um, someone, oh, we have a question coming in. Where's a good place to get redrum songs? Any, any See, I can answer that easily that you're not going to like any music service because all, all music services have some sort of redrums. I don't care whether it's uh, Top Hits USA, whether it's Promo Only, whether it's BPM Supreme, Club Killers, any of them. They all have redrums. You just kind of have to go and search for stuff. Um, a lot of people, 
again, one of the things I wanted to talk about tonight, and I didn't feel it fit in with what we were doing, was about making sure you're downloading songs. Because I do have a DJ friend who did get a gig for upcoming weekend and has not downloaded any songs since before uh, the COVID. He just stopped, and he's panicking now. How do I get the songs? Where do I go to find out? You know, you know, how do I know what was hits in all these past three months? I didn't pay attention to anything. Um, you've got to stay up on it every minute of every day. So. Again, in the same sense that he should have stayed up with all that, if you want the redrums, start with the services that you, you subscribe to and just type in redrum and see what comes up on it, see what they have. You do specific searches for specific songs, uh, and you can find redrums both in the sense of adding a beat to make the song sound more modern, and also a lot of them will fix what they call a variable timing to where if you play a song, an older song, it's not a steady beat. It'll The, the BPM will vary, vary throughout the song. People will go in and fix them to where they're right. Like I have a Dancing Queen, a couple other ones. I have bunches of them. It was like I'm tired of dealing with the original, so I went out and got a redrum that someone had Kwanzaa's that fixed, and the BPM is a steady BPM as opposed to a variable BPM. And just start searching for the stuff you, 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 you need and, and go and, and find it day by day. Like I said, I have a day each week that I go and look for stuff. And I don't spend days on it. I spend a couple hours at most trying to find what I want, get what I want, market, tag it, all that kind of stuff. And then, like I said, if I got a gig tomorrow, I've got every song that I wanted to have since before, you know, whatever. My, my music library has not skipped a beat whatsoever since then, so... I hope yours doesn't because, like I said, with my friend, what he had to do, um, he was in panic mode. And I, I felt really sorry for him a little bit. I did help. I'm not going to lie. I helped him out with some stuff. But uh, he was in panic mode it, because just because he hadn't taken the time. He didn't think about how quickly a gig would pop up. So prepare yourself because, like I said, it's a new world of DJing. It's a new era. You have to be ready for all this because, trust me, there's five people standing behind you that are ready to take the gig if you're not ready to take the gig and that's, and I'm one of them. So I'm just letting you know, So be prepared, do the best you can be professional, um, put the effort in, put the time in, but also take some time off. Cause like I said, you can get burnout in this business so quickly. You have no idea how easy it is to get burnout in this business. Many of you probably have, I bet there's people in this chat right now who have walked away from the DJ business and then came back years later. So, Give yourself credit, pat yourself on the back, give yourself a high five, all that kind of stuff. So again, <laughs> no more questions here. We're good. Awesome. So thank you guys again. Uh, like, share, and subscribe to this Rocky News stuff, all the stuff that I do, all my social media stuff. You can find everything, DJ Michael Joseph. Or if you want to find the links from the website, it's djmichaeljoseph.com. It's all there for everybody free. I have 85-some mixes on there that you can download. I have a bunch over on Mixcloud, a bunch over on SoundCloud, all kinds of stuff. I give them away, so we have lots of cool stuff out there. But share and work with each other. Hit me up if you have any questions. And also take a look at a lot of the other stuff that Disc Jockey News has. They have a lot of great shows that cover every part of the DJ world, uh, not just the mixing stuff like this show does. So definitely check out all that. And again, thanks everybody who supports me on a regular basis that comes to my events, comes to my streams, comes to my programs here Jockey News. Um, uh, trust me, I'm I'm thankful for you because you make me you make me feel like I actually have worth in this business. And I know that kind of sounds silly. You probably think I'm I'm BSing, but no, trust me. There's days that we wonder if anybody's paying attention, and you guys make me know that people are paying attention, and I appreciate that. So until next time, uh, take care of yourselves, and more importantly, take care of each other because it is a crazy, crazy world out there. All right, everybody, God bless.